Good evening. Um, this is the uh, regular monthly meeting of the Simsbury Water Pollution Control Authority. It's uh, today is Thursday, February 9th, 2023. And we are commencing this meeting at 7.01 p.m. We are being live streamed. And my name is Paul Gilmore. And I'm the chairman of this authority. And um, we have, with everyone who's a member uh, of the authority, announced uh, their presence on this um, at this Zoom meeting. Um, Mike, Michael Park. Jay Sheehan. Edward Kelly. Kelly. Jock Brignac. Tom Roy, Town Engineer, Director of Public Works. Tony Piazza, Superintendent, Water Pollution. All right. So we are ready to go. So safety brief is um, first item on the agenda. We are all remote, so we are not in one location. So the brief won't pertain to uh, the location. Just uh, you know, be mindful of things like black ice. Um, you know, whenever there's a little bit of uh, when, the, when the weather gets such that you can get like freezing rain and all that kind of jazz, um, you know, uh, travel can get precarious very quickly. And uh, it's, you know, it's really important to maintain safe distances when you're driving because um, in bad weather, uh, light can turn on a dime and when it does it's usually not good so just be aware and be careful number two item on the agenda is the Belden forest uh condominiums and uh so we had a discussion last uh, last week and we continued it uh, to uh to this week and, uh, you know, I think it was a pretty healthy and uh, discuss robust discussion last week. And I've also had some uh, further, further thoughts about it um, that I kind of wanted to share uh, with this body and, and uh, kind of see your thoughts uh, about that. So, um, Tom, can you... Um, uh, share this uh, document that I have that's called Belden Forest Court, a retirement community. Yep. Okay. Can you guys all see that? <laughs> yep. Okay, so I this is uh, publicly available information that I got off uh, of the uh, internet from the website for uh, Belden Forest Court. Uh, and one of the things that I noted about, you know, their self-description is that, you know, this community really does in some very material respects appear to be functioning um, as a business. And I note, for example, um, that uh, for safety, right, each unit is equipped with two emergency call signals. The system mm -hmm. summons assistance immediately. There's a staff member present 24 hours a day to ensure that the residents in the, the building are safe. You know, so this, it's, you know, they, uh, for the convenience of the residents, they have uh, such things as a beauty salon and a barber shop that they operate uh, uh, within the uh, <clears throat> premises. Uh, they uh, provide you know weekly cleaning services, weekly linen services that are routinely performed. So it, in large measures, it, it's, it, they are providing like you know hotel-like services in substantial measure. 
it really is some sort of an alternative living living facility for uh, elderly care, albeit uh, are you not one that's regulated, but you know that's not within you know our uh, our domain. Uh, they provide transportation. They got a van that they provide you know transportation services to people within the community. Uh, they put together programs for uh, for people within the uh, community to uh, to socialize and uh, you know remain engaged. So I think in large measure this uh, uh, this facility really doesn't resemble you know a condominium. Um, it's uh, it is even it, it, it doesn't really resemble an apartment complex either, because of you know all of the services that are 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 being provided, and uh, you know yes it does permit individuals to own their units and they are individually owned units, but I think the the real driver here is that it's more in the nature of you know. Uh, you know, a, a, a business that is an alternative living facility um, with with all of this, these, you know, high level of services that are, uh, are provided. So I think that it's appropriate for this to be classified um, as a, um, essentially, you know, within the business and not as, as how we classify, uh, you know, residences. So that's kind of my thought in uh, in reviewing this. And so I wanted to see what you all thought about that. Okay, I was uh, not at the last meeting, but uh, my thoughts are this: if we are to look at what be would be the ideal world in our billing policy it would be that everybody is individually metered and our billing would be based on flow actual flow we're probably not going to get there for a long time uh, but we have all of our businesses that are operated under that approach so i don't see any reason why we can't just build this group on actual usage because that's eventually where I think we want to be someday down the road. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? So, I mean, if we have to make a change, I guess there is a public hearing, but we can grant them an exception, right? Based yeah. on the conditions, the way they operate and how the building mm -hmm. operates, right? That is correct. Without that's without a public hearing. And, I, and, and, and if you grant them an exception, does this cr create a precedent for the future when we have similar situations? I mean, this is a unique situation, I think, in my opinion. And uh, maybe maybe we can consider granting them an exception and treat them with a single meter for the entire facility. Well, I mean. If we if we designate it or consider it essentially a business, isn't isn't our current policy such that it would be a bill based upon usage, such that we don't need an exception to the policy? Yeah, but, but I think the issue is Paul that we have like one user. The building is one user, and I think the issue is we were trying to figure out if we can. Consider that like a multiple user, whatever, 60, 70, 80, whatever number of occupants and charge each condo for the usage. But I don't think you can do that because they have no meters. You, you don't know how much each condominium is using. I'm not looking at it that way. The way I'm looking at it is right now, the letter we sent them says, we're treating you like individual units because they're individually owned and therefore you all have to pay uh, a single EDU. And so <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, if we consider 
this uh, facility to be in the nature of a business, essentially uh, some sort of alternative living uh, facility uh, for elderly, then they can just have that one single bill uh, and have it be metered and paid based upon actual usage because we're not considering it to be uh, individual, uh, basically uh, individual uh, residential living. Yeah, that's I, my I see thesis. It Who is it that defines what this is, whether it's a condo or a apartment or a business? How, where does that definition reside? Is it, a, is it our definition, the authority? Do we make the choice as to what we classify them as? I don't know if we define something. I don't know if there's a definition of a business in our policy. So how does Tony know what is a single family house to be built at the, you know, the per year rate, standard rate, or it's a business? How do we determine that? That's based off the um, definitions that are in the planning department. Okay. And generally speaking, if things aren't defined, then... Uh, you know, the rules of statutory construction would apply to our policies, I believe. And under those rules, you know, uh, undefined terms have their have the meaning that's <laughs> commonly understood based upon dictionaries and circulation at the time when the policy was enacted. My, my initial concern was, uh, I, I was torn here. But my initial concern was if we make an exception that somebody was would certainly come up with some uh, uh, tweak on the definition and and claim the same thing. But I can't see that happening. I, this is such a unique situation. But again, Michael, if, if you I, think about what I said earlier, if water going into a facility we meet our water coming out of the facility going into our system. That's the ultimate where we want to be. So I don't think it really matters what that entity is. Cause I think someday we'd like to have all single family houses metered. Cause we have a lot of issues based on size of houses and unoccupied houses yeah. and all of those things. So if you measure the water in, we can determine what we can charge them going into our system. And I don't think we're ever going to, we're going to get there in the near future, but I think somewhere down the road, we want to be there. Okay, but, well, but for, so, for, for right now, Ed, you're saying that, that this is okay to measure the water going into this. Yeah, because we don't lose anything. I mean, well, it is, well, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, We're, yeah. We treat a certain amount of water. That's it, you know. Yeah. yeah right. So, yeah. I mean, here's the thing about that is, yes, it, we do ultimately fully agree with Ed. We fully want to be able to base people charge people based upon actual usage. That is the ultimate goal somewhere down the road. That being said, we have a current policy right now within which we have to work. And right. we can't make decisions, uh, I don't think, based upon our future ideal for how we want things to be. I think we have to work within our current policies and make decisions based upon those policies. That's why um, I think the definition or classification does matter because that's what our what we do right now. We classify a structure and then we we bill it based upon that classification. If it's, if it's a single family unit, it's an, a standard EDU. So yeah, it's a so, business, so that's why. To, to Paul's point, I'd, I'd love to share, um, see if I got the right thing here. Let's see, I'm leaving things open. Um, this is the sewer use policy right here. Can everyone see that? Yep. yep. Okay. So this is, it's a short policy, as we all know. We've seen it a million times. But <laughs> it, Paul's exactly right. We have sewer use divided into two classifications, residential and non-residential. The way we define residential is their residential purposes only. 
single multifamily units, non-residential could be nonprofits, education, business, government, residential units with non-resident ownership. So this is kind of what we're talking about is, you know, we may be in, in, and I think that's to Paul's point, you know, when he brought up the the website, we're kind of in the non-residential user category here. There's residences, yes, but there's, there's, you know, um, you know, it could flip into that. So this is just an interpretation that we have to decide. And then for residential, we do equivalent dwellings because we don't have, we can't use the meters exactly. So that's why, you know, we can't always use, use the meters for non-residential. It's straight off the meters. So this is our policy. This is what we're all, you know, referring to. And, and I agree with, you know, Ed and Paul and Michael that, that I think we can just use non-residential and go with, with the, uh, the metered, metered usage. If I could add, I think, I think Paul, you did a nice job at the beginning with bringing up how this is a business. It offers right. services that are not typical of a traditional residential home or, or condo. And I think, you know, it's, it's not something where you're doing this lightheartedly. And I think if you truly feel this is a business and we go to charging on use, um, the plant is going to be made whole because you are paying for what is coming into and being treated by the authority. So residential units with non-residential. I moved said, it. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Non-residential ownership. To me, that is apartments, right? That's basically what that gets to. That's right. Yeah. Yep. That's what that okay. is. Yes. So that's where apartments <laughs> fit. Right. Okay. It seems clear to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I always, I'm the engineer. I keep going back to policies and rules. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> so we would need it would we need a motion to clarify what we define Belden Forest as or do we need to do anything can we just say we think it fits under this definition and Tony can do what he needs to do that's a good question I, I what I think is that because we had issued a letter saying that they're being built one edu per unit i think that we need to collectively decide by voting on a motion to that you know that uh uh the Belden court property we believe is properly characterized as a business uh given the the level of services that are uh, provided uh, by the management of the property um, and that based upon that classification that uh, it's appropriate it's it's it, our policy uh, calls for them to be built uh, based upon actual usage needed usage so moved <laughs> Second. Any discussion? No. <clears throat> All in favor? Oh, I actually I, had a question. I, oh, oh. Um. So okay, I get it. The residences are going to be one edu, but you mentioned there's a beauty parlor. Does that then get billed as a business? Well, what the well, motion calls for, and, and if it's approved the entire property is going to be treated as a business and the property is going to receive oh, so, so, a so, single I'm sorry, so that bill. it's based on actual usage. Please don't talk sorry. over me because okay. this is being recorded. Right. Uh, the, uh, the entire property is going to be billed based upon usage. That's how it would work. Did we uh, finish the motion? Did it carry? We did. Okay. And we're having any any discussion? 
All right, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All right, the motion carries unanimously. All right, next item on the agenda. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tony, will you uh, prepare an appropriate letter to, to yes. implement that? Okay, yep. great, thank you. Uh, Dino Nobel assessment request, item number three. Who wishes to speak to this? Um, we, we, if you guys in your packet there, we, we wrote a, um, a summary of this, um, as you guys know, the, that the project for Woodland street, which Dino Nobel is paying for, we completed that, um, in the summer of 2022. Um, and originally with a contract that we signed with them, um, hmm. It was a 10 year payback period. You guys, uh, the board in November of 2022 changed to a 15 year payback period. And Dino Nobel has um, requested to be ship, um, changed to a 15 year payback from the 10 year payback. Okay, uh, so is there a cost to doing that if we were to grant that? Um, like, would new documents have to be? signed and put a record like with respect to all the homes would would a new lien have to be uh or an amended lien have to be prepared and recorded uh it hasn't been um sent out yet because the first billing would be in october of or november of this year okay do we do we do we typically file a lien or not yes but it would be on it's on, an on dino nobel yes mm -hmm. It wouldn't be on any of the residences because the residences aren't paying for this project. It's just on. Oh, I see. Level. Okay. All right. So I guess the only thing my concern would be is that, you know, if we do this for them, then uh, why wouldn't we have to do it for anyone else who wants to convert from a 10 year to a 15 year? And I'm not saying that we wouldn't necessarily want to do that, but I'm saying that I think that, you know, it's important to always be fair, to treat people equally uh, when their circumstances are essentially equal in circumstance. And that doesn't mean that, you know, some little facet might make for it not being the same. Uh, you know, it has to be like a material difference to treat a situation differently from another one and, and not have it be uh you know a, an unequal application of, of of our discretion or policy so i kind of want to see what people think here about is this something that we want to let people do um you know to convert from 10 to 15 years and we could charge a fee for that. Like if there's a documentation fee or something has to be recorded, you know, uh, you know, we could say, okay, you know, here's the cost for doing that. And then it's up to them to decide if they want to do that. So I don't know. Well, what what do you all think about that? I think uh, one difference here is that the billing cycle for them hasn't started yet. I think Tony says that starts in November of 23. So maybe that is what we can use as a differentiator between people that have already been billed versus people that have not been billed. I don't know how many people fit into this next billing cycle that haven't been billed yet, but most of those are probably already doing the 15 year, right, Tony? Uh, there's nothing that's been at 15 years yet. We have not had any okay. projects that would fall under a 15 year project yet. So how many how many projects do we have where we're going to have the initial billing in November? Do you know? Right now, just yeah. the one. Just the one. Two, okay. I'm sorry, two. There's another one. Eagle Lane, which we just finished, um, falls under the 15 year payback. And I think we talked to them about 15 year, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we yep. did. Okay. All right. So that could be one way we, you know, we can make a division between. Uh, you know, allowing this for Dino Nobel versus anybody that might have had this 
been built in the past or started being built in the past? Yeah, I mean, it is a difference, but how how meaningful is that? What's what's the rationale as to why that should be a meaningful difference? Well, because we changed to the 15 year cycle and they have not received their first invoice yet. So they have the option to sign up for the 15 year cycle. All right, I could I could be on board with that, but the thing is also, <laughs> I mean, I just think what's going to happen is we might see people come to us and say, "Can I change this to a fifteen year, my ten year to a fifteen year?" I, I think we're going to see that at some point, and then we're going to have to take maybe you know that's maybe that's a decision for another day, but I just see that coming down the pike. Um, you know how much how much of a difference is it usually, Tom? If it's going to be ten years versus fifteen. Well, I mean, it's it's interesting because um, I don't think we would see very many people wanting to switch one because the rates have gone up substantially for the town's bond rate in the last um, year. We used to be somewhere in the neighborhood of two percent, and I think now we're predicting somewhere around four. So it's you know literally almost doubled. Um, the other thing I think the town we'd be reluctant to get into the business of refinancing or redoing the numbers. Um, part of our payment plan, which is unique, is it's simple interest. So as time goes on, you actually pay less each year. Um, so I, I don't think new people coming in would be an issue. Um, I think the bigger issue is where do you guys want to be? We haven't billed them yet. When we set this up, they were predicting on 10 years. Um, in a way, they get a nice benefit because we just barely missed getting them into last year's billing cycle. So they're actually already on essentially an 11 year plan. Do we need a comment from the finance department on this? On finance? No, the tax that I talked to the, um, the tax collector who is yeah. in charge of the, uh, getting the assessments going. And she said it has no, whatever the board decides, um, that's what they send out. It does, it so, does not have any, any but uh, talking about the case where we've already had 10 year, the 10 year billing cycle. Well, you know, going back and extending that to 15 years, what type of a burden would that be for the tax collector? That there, there might be a legal issue with that because the assessments are the lien is already put on the property. Yeah. So it might be a legal issue to have to change that. Okay. I would, I can when you say legal that. issue, you mean a legal action, not necessarily a legal like a action. Legal... Correct. Yes, yeah, legal a, action. Yep. Filing a lien's not yeah. that complicated, but there's an action that has to be taken. All right. I'm 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 a little behind here. And the in the summary it says as of September 2022 meeting, the WPCA authorized the change for assessment payback from 10 to 15 years. That was for for any new construction that was going to happen. New ah, okay. All right. Got it. Hmm. with the idea we're trying to make it more palatable to do sewer extensions and to support yeah. the okay the new people in because okay. it, as, as you recall the trend is that things are getting much more expensive and more untenable for extensions yeah, yeah they are okay so it's legally like we're not able to go past 15 years so it sounds like our issue is not dino nobel but if is we make an exception precedent? for them, who else is going to want to come and change their 10 year payback period? And then what kind of issues are we going to run into there? Yes. Do we fight that fight another day or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, we don't have to decide it. I just wanted to raise it because yeah, I thought it would be fruitful for at least a, a preliminary discussion. Sure. And I do like your, your, you know, scenario where it is really different because they haven't paid yet. When someone's already paid and they're trying to go to a 15, that's, that is a refi. That's a, that, it's the amortization. We did everything about it. It might be 11 years remaining or 14. It's, it's very different. It, you, keep, you know, they, so I, I don't, I see them as different scenarios once it starts. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so does anyone want to move to um, permit uh, an assessment uh, payback by the uh, Dino Nobel folk at a 15-year uh, uh, amortization? I'll so, move. Oh, okay, I think we just want to add with their first payment due in whatever it was, Tony, November of 23. Just so we have that in the motion that their first payment is going to be in November of 23 under the new 15 year schedule. And I will second that motion as amended. <clears throat> All right. Any discussion? Seeing no one interested in further discussion. All in favor, uh, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Jockey, oh. oops. Jock is opposed. Okay. I'm concerned right. about the administrative burden that this might produce. Understood. I mean, that's a valid concern. So, but the motion carries based upon the number of yeas. All right, so let's move on to item number four. Pine Hill Homeowners Association sewer upgrade, possibly set public hearing. Who wishes to remark? Um, you, uh, the board had a public hearing um, back in December regarding this project <laughs> with an estimate of $975,000 which was above what the association had originally approved for the project. So they wanted to go back and vote on it themselves again. Um, in January, the association approved um, the 975,000 for the project on their end. Um, so for us to move forward, we have to have another public hearing to on the project. Um, and then if the board at that point in time, um, decides to go with the project, we'll go ahead. Um, but this this motion, this uh, just a motion to set a public hearing for um, Pine Hill Association and 553 Hot Meadow Street for the sewer upgrade in the area. All right, who wishes to so move? So moved. Any second? Jay, second. seconds. <laughs> okay. Beat you this time, Ed. <laughs> um, we probably need to put a date on that motion. At the or next the the next, next WPCA meeting. WPC meeting. <laughs> All right. As so amended, does anyone want to uh, second that motion? Second. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, treatment facility report. Tony. Yep. Um, scrolling How we to doing? <laughs> Good as always. Um, we did have one issue on uh, January 22nd. Uh, we had a call from a resident at uh, 30 Sheila Court for a sewer backup. Um, we ended up uh, on Hot Meadow Street. The 14-inch the line on Hot Meadow Street was actually plugged with grease um, right before the siphon. Um, crew spent about uh, oh, eight hours clearing the grease out of the pipe that was there. We got some good, Jay, I got some good pictures for you if you want to see them later. Uh, <laughs> you know, some man, nice rest, logs. We got some nice I logs. not looking grease. at the pictures. <laughs> we got some nice logs of grease out of there. The guys did a really good job. Um, it was a long night, raining, nice and cold mm -hmm. out. So it was fun. Um, but uh, we filed all the applicable reports that we had to with that. And nothing, nothing actually got on the road. It was just ended up, it was probably an inch or two in two different basements. <laughs> Um, so do we know where uh, the grease came from specifically? I know grease moves, but is there a, some change in anything? No, that that's a whole residential area. And because it's right before the siphon, as you know, the, the, the siphon is surcharging that line right there. So, um, what we're actually looking at is eliminating that siphon and, uh, running that flow down into the old Hartford property. So it goes through that siphon, which is a much bigger line. 
um, to hopefully alleviate that whole issue. So you think that's primarily residential Greece? It is. Yeah, that okay. whole area is all residential up there. Uh, the only thing that's there is um, the Cumberland Farms and um, Dunkin' Donuts. There's nothing and, else that's in that area. And they have grease traps? Not required. Okay. Hmm. That's the source, then. I'm sorry? <laughs> that could be the source. No, they're, they're class two restaurants because they don't produce grease. Oh. That's what they're classified as based on the health department. <laughs> like, it's most likely residential grease, though. Um, yeah. we, the, the, uh, we checked. I checked the last. We actually cleaned that line about five years ago. So it's over five year, five year buildup of material, probably. Um, we just got back the um, clarifier evaluation from Weston and Sampson. Um, we're going through that. Uh, we have a couple of different options um, right now, probably looking at about a $500,000 construction project to fix the primary clarifiers to get them fully operational and stabilized. Um, but again, we're still working on that. And uh, Granite Inliner is supposed to be in next week to finish our hmm. Pipes for the final part of the three-year contract with them, which would basically all of Tariffville will be lined and um, several of the older pipes that are on Hot Meadow Street will be done. It was a nice uh, uh, $750,000 that we spent on that project and got it all done. Do you, uh, do you have extra staff on hand for the Super Bowl halftime flush? <laughs> <laughs> No, with no no one will be in at that point in time. So we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> have you ever noticed? Do you measure it? Do you ever see a, a spike at that time? No. It, like anything else, it's all it's all time of day dependent, you know. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's home at six o'clock at night doing stuff. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> Tony, with the uh, lining being completed, would we have the ability to put a rough quantity together of I and I that we've taken out of the system? Yeah, we can look at the um the flow trends from um, the Tungsis pump station mm -hmm. and um, see, see what, what it actually reduced down to. I, I just think it's one of those things that, you know, has been done that the, the, just an amazing value in terms of prolonging the life of the sewers that we have, but we're also now only treating um, water that needs to be treated and we're not letting groundwater into the system that then costs all the way through the process. So. And everything else in the plant is running great. Good. All right. Thanks for the report. Does anyone wish to uh, remark further? Or have any other questions about the report? No. Okay. Let's move on to correspondence. What do we got? I don't think we have it. Do we have any correspondence other than? Yeah, I don't. I don't see anything. No, no see it either. Finance okay. this month. There's no. There's no in this month. All right. Then. then that takes us to item number eight on the agenda: the January minutes, meeting minutes, and possible approval. And does anyone who uh, wishes to review the minutes? Um, has, has had an opportunity already to do so? Or does anyone need to take a couple of minutes to review them now? All right. So um, does anyone have any questions or concerns about the uh, minutes as presently written? Okay. That being said, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as stated. So moved. Second. Thank you, Jock. Thank you, Dr. Park. All right, any discussion? There's never discussion on this. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Motion one, carries. One abstention. Right, you weren't here, that's great. 
Um, so that gets us to item number nine, uh, adjournment, uh, unless anyone has anything that's burning on their mind that they uh, want to uh, discuss uh, under some auspice of other business. Well, I'll, I have a lot that's burning on my mind, but none that's relevant to this. So, <laughs> so I'll back off. <laughs> on that note, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Anyone second? I'll second. Uh, I'm not going to entertain discussion on adjournment. I'll just put it to a vote. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Good to see you all.